well done, Kirsty, as well. Terrific, Michael. Yeah. Congratulations. Uh, it's a really great win. Uh, all well, the boys didn't give up. I mean, uh, we got the lead early, and we just kept persisting with the, the six-goal break, and we uh, kept working really hard. Didn't let them back in, which was really great. Reservations uh, to Carlton, though. They played well. So we were the younger side, the, the quicker side, I think, on the day. And uh, it's great. Great feeling to be part of. Michael, the year of the Indigenous people, did that mean anything more to you today, running around there? Oh, it did. It did, really. Um, especially I knew Morris was going to get the medal out. And especially having so many of uh, <coughs> supporters, Aboriginal communities and that behind you, I, I uh, felt really confident going into the game, especially with their support. It's great. Great. Well done, Michael. Pleasure to watch you today. Thanks, Bernie. Yes, Bernie, you've summed it up. It's Grand yeah. Final Cup, and of course, you've got the opportunity of purchasing one of those, particularly if you're an Essendon supporter from any What's News stores. That's uh, from next Monday, or from the Essendon Football Club out at Windy Hill. That is $150. The uh, Grand Final T-shirts are also available as from tomorrow, I guess. And of course, something that's synonymous with Grand Final here in Australia is the WEG poster. So all that lies ahead of you. Just quickly checking all results today because it has been a mighty day here at the MCG in the main game. Essendon too strong. 2013 to Carlton, 13-11. What's with the first all-Victorian final in three years, Melbourne was truly in the grip of finals fever. Essendon's baby bombers came of age today in the pressure cooker of the grand final at the MCG. They blitz Carlton to win their 15th flag, a record shared with the defeated Blues. The best crowd for six years, almost 97,000, crammed into the stadium to watch the game, which was never close. Well, look, I think this side here could, um, I mean, they are very young, there's a good blend of uh, experience too, but it could probably go on for a few years, I think. Uh, the hold this game had over the public was proved by the numbers who turned up early. Hours before the MCG opened, thousands of members lined up at the gates, which opened at 8am. In less than two hours, all the unallocated seats in the southern stand were claimed. Some cut a steel grate in the stand to sneak into the ground. This man, who had a ticket, cut his legs getting in illegally through the wire. He got a seat, took a pass out and then sold his ticket. And how much to sell it for? Two fifty. Scalpers were out offering tickets to those desperate to see the game. Can you give you a ballpark figure? Two hundred. Hours before the match, the pubs near the ground were doing a steady trade. Police warned they would crack down on troublemakers. If you like the call of the blitz, it's certainly it's a concentrated effort for a major event. Every form of public transport was bulging with fans. Some stopped to remember the six men from the Lindale Football Club who were killed in a plane crash last week. I'm sorry. Thank you. Have a good day. The players ran a gauntlet of well wishes as they made their way into the ground. Good luck, mate. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Former Essendon champion Simon Madden was having an each way bet. Essendon by seven points and Justin Madden to win the North Swift medal. And mum will be happy. The game was an ordeal for the parents of the players. I think it's probably harder watching your, your son play or your relative play than it is actually playing. I'm feeling shocking. <laughs> Nerves were also felt by the hundreds of children as they waited for their turn to get onto the ground for the half-time entertainment. Nervous, going out the ground, you know, about thousands and thousands of people. This is the first grand final since 1990 to be fought out by two Victorian sides. With interstate interests cast aside, parochial passions peaked. In Essendon, the Grand Hotel in the heart of Bomberland was doing a roaring trade as the faithful watched the game unfold on the big screens. The action turned the suburb into a ghost town as normally busy streets were deserted. In Carlton, Percy's Bar was the centre of attention as fans watched the match with sinking hearts. The streets were also quiet. So spare a thought for the Jewish football fans because they were pleased with the result. Mark O'Brien, Seven Nightly News. A good start. And the schoolboy with the big task, Dustin Fletcher, began well. But the champ was to prove a headache. It was the Bombers who made the jump early, and one of the stars of the final series, Michael Long, embarked on one of his trademark runs to split the Carlton defence, despite a valiant attempt by Silvani. 30 metres out! Oh, what play! It may have been touched on the line! No! Salmon marked strongly, and Essendon had winners everywhere. Greg Williams' tagger, Sean Denham, became an attacker, and the Bombers led by five goals at quarter time. 
Essendon's enforcer Dean Wallace took out Mill Hanna early in the second and the Blues defender was carried off. Another scalp on the belt of Dean Wallace. Fortunately, Hanna returned within a few minutes. Straight away, the villain of the piece beat two to kick a goal. Oh, Wallace has kicked the goal! The game sparked up with marked men everywhere and Denham found himself benched after a blow to the nose. The Bombers led by 49 points until Bradley broke from the centre to find Kernahan. But Essendon had the look of winners even before half-time when Buick found the range. The Bombers are hot! Silvani moved to the forward line and he combined with Kernahan.